So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at the Lamy Logo Fountain Pen. This is one of the more affordable fountain pens in Lamy's line. It's basically a step up from something like the Safari or the Vista. These are the sort of the plastic pens. And after you go from the plastic Vista, you have the AL Star and the LX. Alternatively, you could go to the sort of native metal body pens. That's not what Lamy calls them, but it's basically the only metal body pens. That would be like the ST, or in this case, the logo. So the logo sells for about $35 at retail price. It's sold in two finishes, matte and stainless steel. Uh, sorry, matte and brushed stainless steel. This is actually called the matte finish, even though it's a little bit shiny. The brushed stainless steel looks like this, and you can see it's very distinctively brushed. The logo is one of the long-standing designs from Lamy, so these have been around for a very long time and they're easy to find used. In fact, if you are willing to buy it off eBay, you could regularly find them even in a new old stock, you know, NOS condition for around $20 or $25. Basic things that define the logo in the fountain pen are the steel body, again, either brushed or matte, steel cap, steel clip, sort of a straight looking, like a brutalist type clip. It is spring loaded, very nice little feature there, taken from some of Lamy's higher end pens. Very limited use of Lamy logo, so it's really just appears right here on this model. And then there are some scattered bits of plastic in this pen, it's not an all metal pen. So we see plastic very prominently at this top piece, Metal in the grip, but plastic here. And then plastic at the top here, and then no real finial, just that little spring action, which is very cool again. The pen does post, but it posts not by overlaying the body, just by the cap posting onto this plastic piece. While, on the, while we were on the subject, sorry about that, the plastic piece right here is just a little top cap. It actually does look cheap in person. It's not just it appears cheap on video. It just it is not a very nice component. And what it is, it's just a little piece of plastic with these little ridges here, which are there to stop this from going down further. It gets a little thicker over time. As it goes down, you can see it is sort of sprung out right here, and that gives a press fit to the cap when it posts. And it has these little slots here, and those, again, are just so this piece can be pressed out. It kind of looks like a wing that you can press to pull it, but it doesn't really want to come out. And you can, can, you can see through it at some points, which is not a big deal, but it is there. If you screw it, it does not unscrew. It is kind of pressed in there. There must be latches here where it's caught on. I'm not really sure how to take it off. My guess is if you push this, it will eventually come, but I don't want to risk breaking it. So steel body, steel section, not very large, but large enough, bigger than the CP1. Plastic there. Here we have a standard Lamy nib. It's sold in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. In this case, I have it in the extra fine. And again, this is the standard steel Lamy nib that you could pull this off and put it on basically any Lamy pen that's sold recently, except for the Lamy 2000. If we spin this, we open it up, we see it uses a standard Lamy T10 cartridge. Alternatively, you could use a converter like this one here sells for about five or six dollars, is not included with the pen. I think it used to be, but it's not anymore. And then we could see mostly, or you know, under here, all metal hardware. So the section and this screw piece, I believe are different pieces. I believe they're press fit or glued together, epoxied, whatever, but uh, they are both metal. The feed is just a sort of standard black plastic and it sort of, it tends to pick up color from the ink. In this case, I'm using Lamy's standard blue in that cartridge.
The cap is very simple, just the steel, spring, logo, more plastic, and then more plastic at the top. One interesting difference between the pen in the two different colors is that the brushed one will use uh, chrome plated plastic or chromed plastic. This uh, steel one or the matte one uses black plastic and that's true at the bottom and then also at the top, chrome plastic, matte, uh, sorry, black plastic. Generally between the two, you might lean towards this one because it looks a little bit cooler, but this chrome plastic always, always, always flakes over time. Whereas black plastic, you know, might get a little beat up, might fade a little bit, it might scratch, but it will never chip. So I tend to lean towards this black, even though I think the chrome one looks a little bit nicer out of the factory. So that about covers it from this pen. I'll do a couple quick size comparisons. This is not a very large pen. Uh, here it is next to a Vista. Uh, here we have next to a Lamy ST, which is sort of another affordable model. They're about the same size. Here we have a Platinum Preppy. And here we have a Lamy CP1, which is probably the most interesting comparison because uh, if you're choosing between the pens here, uh, one of the top choice will be between the Safari and Logo. So they're about the same price or the Vista and Logo. Or you might be considering buying a CP1, which would be the sort of upgrade pen. It sells for about $60. It has, the CP1 has a lot of features that are very similar to the uh, Logo. And I'll probably do a comparison video between the two. But basically, they both have a spring-loaded clip. They both have this sort of a quirky uh, top piece, although it is metal on the CP1 instead of being plastic. They both have a thin profile and a very narrow, small section. CP1 is a little narrower and thinner than the logo. Get a picture with the caps off between these three. So I know people will be curious about that. The Vista and the Safari are a good deal larger. I've done many, many writing samples with Lamy's steel nibs. So this is probably unnecessary, but it feels weird to end the video without it. But this is the Lamy logo. And this is with the extra fine. It's a nice nib. I like it a lot. So Lamy logo. This is one of my favorite pens in the Lamy line. I think it is a really nice mixture. A oh, little nice touch there it says, I believe it says Germany under there. Anyway, back to the Lamy logo. Very nice pen, very good mixture of affordability and quality. I believe it is not as nicely made as the CP1, but I also feel like the CP1, there's no reason to drop $60 on that pen when you're getting almost all the features from the logo. It's a really nice writing pen. I think it looks really cool. They hold up really well over time. The fact that you could buy these for around $20 is really phenomenal to me and it makes it one of the best deals in the Lamy line. Uh, I, I really do like the Vista, so I would tend for most people to get that. But if you like Lamy, you have a bunch of those T10 cartridges, maybe you have some converters, you're looking for a good next pen, I think the logo is a really nice way to go. A lot of people tend to go towards an LX or a CP1, but the Vista is probably the smart move for my money. It's not sold in a gold nib, so there's no way you could drop a ton of money on it. You could buy it direct from Lamy and spend 36 or $40. But ultimately, I would say, check this pen out. It's really nice and is also sold in a rollerball, which I have right here. And that's quite nice as well. So that's the logo. Thanks for watching.